All right, guys, it's uh, January the 18th and it's super cold here in uh, middle Georgia. And what I've got here on the tailgate is I've got a brand new box of traps from my good buddy Brian over at Southern Snare Supply. Um, this time of year, everybody's trying to build their deer herds, health back up. You know, we start manufacturing the 20% protein feed now. Um, and so from here through the summer, you're gonna have a lot of deer feed out. Um, and as you guys know, when you put feed out, you have other critters that come too. And I'm gonna show you today how simple it is to trap those critters, mainly your raccoons and your possums that are gonna show up on your feed site. Um, you know, raccoons have gotten a lot of attention here lately, especially in the you know, game managers world from the turkey side, they're, they're a big nest predator. They'll raid a nest and eat every egg, possum same way. Uh, and they've also been removed from the fur bears list here in the state of Georgia, meaning there's no closed season when it comes to raccoons and possums. So it gives us the freedom to be able to trap them and remove them, you know, year round. So if you've never done it before, it's super simple. Just a couple of tools that you need, um, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. We're going to take these traps straight from the box, get them prepared, baited, and in the ground, show you how to do all that. But first, I want to talk about some of the legal considerations that you need to, you need to keep in mind when it comes to trapping. So in the state of Georgia, you do not have to have a trapping license if you're trapping on your land, and let me say, it has to be in your name. We're not talking about a hunting lease or a piece of property a friend lets you hunt. Um, if the property is in your name, you can trap on that property without a trapping license. Anywhere else, you're gonna be required to purchase a $45 uh, resident trapping license. And it's an application process, and I'm gonna put the link on the screen right now that will take you to the Georgia DNR's website to allow you to put in for that license. So the trapping license will run from April 1st to March 31st of the following year. So right now, if you put in for a trapping license in the state of Georgia, that license, unless you specify for it to start on April 1st, it will expire on March 31st. So if you wanna start trapping right now, you wanna trap through the summer, go ahead and fill out an application for the remainder of this year and then also next year and you'll be good to go. Um, State of Georgia also requires that while you're trapping that you carry a catch pole with you, which I have here. Um, just a tool like a dog catcher uses. Got a noose on the end of it, allow you to slip it around the animal's neck and you can cinch it down. Uh, really, um, really, really useful tool uh, when you get into trapping and you're outside of that fur bearer season and you catch a fox or a bobcat, something that uh, you're required to release. Um, you don't want to be doing that with your hands. This catch pole helps tremendously. State of Georgia also says that you have to carry a 22 long rifle. Uh, and when they say long rifle, that means the caliber so you could have a 22 pistol or a rifle this is my trapping rifle it was uh, my granddaddy's gun it's an old Remington Speedmaster and you just can't beat this thing up or tear it up enough it's oh iron sights I could shoot a gray squirrel out of the top of a tree with it right now but so license catch pole 22 rifle um, and then you have to have your traps tagged. Uh, you have several different options there. You can engrave your number. When you, when you send in that application, they're gonna send you back a state of Georgia trapping number. And you can engrave that number on your traps. Um, I use copper stamped tags that have my number um, that I affix to the trap. Um, but if you go the tag route, make sure you put it in a place where the animal can't get to it very easily and pull it off. Um, 
and as always carry 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 extras with you because in the event that a tag does get pulled off by an animal and you can't find it um, you need to keep that trap legal uh, but anyway we're gonna get down to it get in this box and show you what we got so got some goodies here from Brian um, this this right here this right here is our dog proof raccoon trap and this is gonna be my tool of choice these are actually uh, Southern Snares own version of a dog proof coon trap um, but it's very simple and it's called a dog proof trap because it has a trigger inside this cylinder here that requires you to pull up on it to fire the trap um, so even if a dog could get a small paw down in there uh, it's very unlikely that he could grab that trigger and lift up um, but a raccoon has you know, hands, uh, possum has hands, skunks. They can get in there and they can grab this and they can lift up on that trigger, which the bait will be in or under and, and it'll fire the trap catching them. Uh, it's got a little stake on it right here uh, and that allows you to put it in the ground. I've, I've recently heard of people uh, anchoring these traps in and then arming them and just laying them on the ground. I personally wouldn't recommend that. Um, I want that trap firmly in the ground so when they reach in there and go to pull it on that trigger the trap doesn't fall over you know and and prevent it from firing um, so we got the stake um, this is the dog it will set down into this trigger and when lifted up it you know throws it out of the, out of this notch here and fires a trap you've got got a small piece of chain on here and three swivels so We've got this one swivel around the stake so when the animal gets caught they can move freely. We've also got another crunch proof style swivel right here with a small length of chain and then another crunch proof swivel here on the end. And so being triple swiveled it's going to prevent that animal from when he gets caught uh, being able to create any kind of leverage with the trap and, and breaking the bones in their leg. Um, you know raccoons, possums, skunks their legs aren't very big so if they were to fracture those bones in their legs by creating leverage on this trap um, they could eventually just pull that appendage off and get away and and we don't want that to happen but uh, good looking little traps here uh, built like a tank as I would expect from you know Brian um, I've already put a trap tag on this one but I've got five more in the box that are still in the package if we're talking about foothold traps for coyotes or bobcats or foxes, I'm going to take those traps when I get them from the factory and I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean them, uh, get all the grease off of them, the factory grease, uh, and then I'm going to put a coat of wax on there to one, speed the trap up, to conceal any scent. With these dog proof raccoon traps, I don't need that. We're just going to take them straight out of the box. We're going to put some trap tags on them so that we're legal. Um, we're going to attach some anchors on there and we're going to go down here to this bait pile and put them out. When it comes to anchoring the traps, you've got several different options. Um, got some cable extensions right here. Uh, this would allow me to fix a trap to a tree or a root or something of that nature uh, without having to physically drive a stake into the ground. Um, and I'll show you how these work. Some of you guys might be in an area where the grounds this time of year is frozen and driving a stake in might be a little more trouble than it's worth. Uh, these cable extensions might be your best option. Get them undone here. Like I said, I literally just received this package and getting it out and looking at it. So, got these right here uh, I don't know the exact length on this cable extension but I'm gonna say six over six foot because I'm six three and there's a little bit of bend in the cable and it's right there to the top of me so you would be able to take this uh, 
Also got some quick links in here. And these are just uh, little links of chain with a screw gate on them. Um, and I use these a lot, uh, especially with these style traps. So just got my, my quick link on here. Um, I would take my trap, I would hook my quick link onto the trap itself, and then I would hook it onto this cable extension, um, screw the gate shut, because we don't want it to come undone when the animal starts pulling on it. That would not be good to lose one of these traps, have a raccoon out there running around with a trap on his foot. It's the last thing we want. So I'm going to take this screw gate and screw it shut. And just for, just for good measure, I like to take a pair of pliers and crank down on that thing just because I don't want it to bind up and accidentally open. Okay, so now that we've got this cable extension on here, we can set this in the ground. But first, we have got a loop on this end that's plenty big enough for the trap to pass through. And we can girth hitch this around a, a tree trunk and, and a pretty significant size tree if we choose to. So that's one way to anchor your traps um, to keep them from being able to pull it away. Uh, another way that uh, a lot of people do this is they will go with a earth anchor or a ground type anchor. So got another trap right here. Like I said, I just got these. So I'm gonna bust it out of the package and I'm gonna grab another one of these quick links. Uh, the, the disadvantage, I guess, if there is one for the ground anchors or the earth anchors, um, you're gonna have to have a driver to put that anchor in the ground and you're gonna have to have a hammer to, you know, to drive that driver into the ground. Um, and it's just something extra for you to carry. But this is, this is an earth anchor here. Um, it's on a cable. These are Fox Hollow Super Stakes and it's just a bullet, bullet style anchor with a hole in the back. And that hole accepts this driver. And then you're able to drive that into the ground and anchor that trap down. Once you drive it into the ground, you'll pull up on it and it'll turn that bullet like this and it won't come out. You'll have to have some, uh, some type of puller to pull it out. So you just put that on that uh, quick link, you know, put your trap on there, and then uh, you're ready to go with, with that as well. Um, they make, they call them wolf fangs. Uh, people are making pogo stakes. There's all types of earth anchors. I just choose to go with the Fox Hollow Super Stake because one, it's, it's pretty solid. I like the driver. There's no chance of your driver slipping off when you're driving it down on the ground. Uh, and two, all my coyote foothold traps have the same style uh, anchor on them. So when I'm setting traps on a piece of property, if I'm setting coyote traps and uh, dog proof traps, I just need to carry one driver with me. So that's another way to do it. Um, trap tags right here. Again, order these through Southern Snare Supply and it's just a copper tag and it's got my trapper's number on it. I'll take these and go on this crunch proof swivel and I'll just wrap it around that swivel there. Um, the first swivel below the trap, it's a little bit harder for them to get to. You know, raccoons are, are curious creatures and they'll go after something shiny if they can. And I'll just grab a pair of pliers once I wrap it around there and crimp it down. Okay, so there's another trap with an anchor on it that is ready to be baited and go in the ground. You notice it's got a barcode on here, sticker. Um, and you might be wondering, why aren't you taking that off? A lot of guys will paint these traps white and it just draws the raccoon's attention to it. So I'm not concerned about this sticker being on there. After uh, several catches, they will, they will pull this off anyway, so. Um, Ground anchor and cable extensions are the two choices. Uh, also in this bag, 
uh, or in this box, I should say, I've got a couple of uh, I've got a couple of attractants or lures here. Um, these are also made by Southern Snares. Uh, this one is a smoked wild cherry, um, and this one is an extreme melon flavor. So, pretty excited to give these a try. Um, and then, let's see what else we got? Here. Got a uh, actual bait from Southern Snares. Brian, like I said, Brian makes all this stuff right there at the shop. And this one's called Bandit Buster. It's a smoked fish attractant. Um, looks like it's got some cracked corn in there and then some little food pellets. Um, so excited to give this a try. One of the ways that I've always done it in the past when it comes to baiting a trap is jet puffed marshmallows. Super simple. Take, a, uh, take one of these big marshmallows. Raccoon's got a, a sweet tooth and with, with this trap style right here, it makes it perfect. It has a circular trigger in there. And I'll take this marshmallow and I'll squeeze it up. And I will shove it inside that circular trigger in this trap. So when that raccoon reaches in there to grab that marshmallow, he's going to pull up on this trigger because that marshmallow is going to swell up inside that trigger and make it hard to pull out. So, just like that. Um, something else that we have here, a lot of you are gonna be able to set these traps by hand and you're just gonna squeeze it right there and pull the dog and use it as leverage to pull the spring down and set it, okay? But, for those of you that aren't strong enough, they make a dog proof uh, trap setter. It's just a metal piece like this that you would fit inside the trigger or inside the spring. Big thing here is just make sure you flip that dog down so that it rides in between there and that just gives you leverage to be able to push that spring down and then drop that dog into place, just like that. So, you know, if your hands aren't strong enough, um, you can use a trap setter. Like I said, I'm not worried about cleaning these traps to get any smell off of them. You notice I'm not even wearing any type of glove, uh, although I probably should. It's pretty cold this morning and the, and the steel of the trap is cold on my hands, but, um, I think we've got everything. I think we've gone over everything as far as the traps go and the stuff that you need. Um, one more thing um, that I like um, is I, I'll throw my traps in a bucket, just make it easier to transport. So I'm just using this Yeti bucket here. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand bucket it is. You can use an old five gallon paint bucket. Um, I like this bucket because it has this pouch system on the side that I can drop my pliers in um, or tools. Uh, I can carry my traps, I can carry my baits, I can carry my cable extensions in there, my trap hammer, but really any bucket will do. So anyway, I think that's got us covered. We're going to get the tags on the rest of these traps, get them unboxed, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to set them. We got this spot right here on this ridge and these hardwoods where we've been feeding the deer and deer season's over for us but we want to keep them in here because got a couple of bucks that kind of like to get their sheds um, but right down here in the bottom is a creek and that's where all those raccoons are coming up out of they're traveling up and down it be very easy to go down there and set traps on a creek but the creek is just off our property so I'm gonna set them right here and show you how easy it is to catch those bait stealers. So we've got the trap with a cable extension on it. And literally, right over here. So this is 
the base of this tree. I'm going to clean this debris out from around the bottom of it. And I'm just going to take this cable extension and go around the trunk of this tree and run my trap through it. Just like that. And you can see that's a fairly large diameter tree right there. I would caution against going around something super small because those raccoons can get to chewing on it and you don't want them to chew the sapling down and run off with your trap. But got it just like that. I'm gonna sit here and arm this trap. Well, I'll tell you the dig them springs on these are super strong. There we go. Just like that. And I'm going to take that stake and I'm going to punch that trap down in the ground. And I'm going to grab some of this bandit buster. That smoky fish. And I'm just going to dump a little bit of it down there in the bottom of that trap. Some of it spilled on the ground. I'm fine with that. Uh, as they say, for the cherry on top, I'm going to take this smoked wild cherry uh, lure. And I've actually got an old plastic knife. These things are a dime a dozen. Keep them in my bucket. Man, look at that. Whew, God, that smells good. It smells like a it smells like a Jolly Rancher, actually. I'm just gonna take a little dab of that right there and smear it around the inside of that trap right there. And that trap's good to go. So we're going to get the rest of these traps set up around here and got a tactic cam right there and uh, we'll be back to check them. Georgia state law says every 24 hours at a minimum you have to check your traps. So we'll be back in the morning to check them and I bet you we got some raccoons. Alright so we got this one with our ground anchor and I'm just going to come right over here on the back side of this pile. I've already got a marshmallow that we put down in there on the trigger. Um, I'm going to arm this one. Just, just like so. I'm going to take it and I'm going to punch that thing down in the ground right there. And then I'm going to take my trap stake driver, set it in, and pound it in. And driving it down just toward that quick link is right in the ground and then pulling up on it and that sets our anchor right there. I'm going to take and push some dirt back into that hole well, with my hammer uh, on, a, on a coyote or something like that you can get water that will run down in that stake hole and then if they sit there and pull and pull and pull they can rare occasions pump that thing out of the ground. I've never had it happen but uh, it is a possibility so there's another trap set. Grab a cable extension right here. I got another way um, just another option, if you don't want to use a quick link, you can actually take a cable extension and just loop it right through that bottom uh, crunch proof swivel there. So I'm just going to come over here. Uh, use this tree right here, as a matter of fact. Go around it. And girth hitch it through there. I'm going to slide it down around this thicker part of the trunk there. Cinch it down good and tight. And I'm gonna pull this trap over here where I can get it by this corn pile. So I 
like that. Punch it in the ground. Take some of our, our bandit buster. Did it focus? Yep. Just a little bit in there. And then, now you can come up. We'll take this extreme melon lure, give them some options here, and whew, that smell, that does smell like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. Just a little dab right there around the inside rim of that trap. And keep moving. One more, that'll give us four down here on this bait pile. There's been four or five raccoons coming in. Um, so, go right there. And, go pitch the tree. Slide it down to the bottom. Pull it tight, okay? Grab, grab old marshmallow. And throw in here on this trigger. Like I said, I, I like these traps because of the circular trigger in there, and it allows me to get that marshmallow. Um, really, really wedge it in there to where they're gonna pull up on that trigger, trying to get it. finger and poke it down in there good. There we go. You can arm it. And I'm gonna pull it out here and get it a little closer to the bait pile with some of these sticks. I don't want anything that they can get caught up in around it. Let me just punch that thing in the ground. There's a root there. There we go. Just like that. And I'll tell you what. filling the marshmallow. Take a freebie marshmallow and just shove right there in the top. Just like that. Tear some of this little privet hedge down. Alright. So, as you can see, if you've got a problem with raccoons or possums getting onto your feed or your bait sites, it's super simple um, to start trapping them and one you're cutting down on your non-target consumption of your feed so it's saving you money there two you're helping out your turkey population by eliminating nest predators um, so don't be intimidated by the process there's plenty of other ways to trap raccoons but in my opinion the dog proof coon traps are the easiest to um, buy take straight out of the box set up and start trapping raccoons today so uh, for all your deer feed, uh, for all your wildlife and nutrition needs, check us out at 4swildlife.com. And like I said, Southern Snare Supply, located in uh, Southeast Georgia, full trap supply house. They got everything you need. Check them out too. Thanks for watching.